Hello everybody, welcome back to my videos. Today I want to go back and revisit The Sims 1 game. A house called the Goth House. And I think it's a fun little place to explore. So as you see in this screen, it is Sim Lane, the original Sim Lane. And one of the most famous families that you see in all four of the Sims series is the Goth family. So I figured, why not explore that? And this video is also showing you how I rebuilt it in SketchUp. So, yeah, we'll just check this out. And the house circled is the Goth house. Here's a very detailed close-up view of the house while playing in the sim lot. As you can see, it sort of has a decrepit look to it. Gray shingles. And just sort of has a vibe that it's kind of old and just haunted. Hence the upper right, the graveyard. The house in the game has a graveyard. Now, of course, the house that I'll show you um, in just a little bit won't have a graveyard, but it will have close resemblance to the goth house as it, as I envisioned it to be a real house. And it's just in reference to the game. Here's another view of the goth house. So you can even see some of the characters, um, Bella and Mortimer Goth. And then you can also see another view of the graveyard. Again, this is just a game house. And you see the roof looks kind of funny. That's just how the game was. But, of course, new games have had more advanced tools. But you will see very shortly how I mastered it. Now to see what the inside of the original house looks like. Here is a somewhat blurry version of the first story. It's very, very, very simple floor plan. And not a very practical one at that. Um, as you can see, only four little rooms. A living room, kitchen, bathroom, and a bedroom. Kitchen um, of course doesn't even have a table the table is actually out on the patio as you can see on the right the living room it's not too functional I mean it's functional and then it's not it has sort of a porch and of course the bathroom you can think of any real place to put it so you put it right next to the kitchen and access it from the kitchen green tile at that. Well, here's a lot much better photo of the interior. As you can see, Mortimer is right there in the entryway next to the piano. And the living room. And I have really much in it. Very simple bedroom there. Another view of the bathroom, and of course the kitchen is partially hidden. And then there's that table outside again. Of course, I'm not sure why you would want to eat outside, but you'll see in my model here in just a little bit how I correct that. Alright. And then of course there are stairs, and we're going to go upstairs right now. Upstairs, just one room, which is actually used as Cassandra's bedroom. Mortimer's and Bella's is that little one downstairs. Now it's funny, you know, I mean, she gets a really, really, really big bedroom compared to their little bedroom downstairs. Of course, she's far away from the bathroom. Oh, well, they all kind of are. So it's not really the most practical floor plan. But uh, that's just the game house. And as you can see, that's partially the back of it. It's really from the back view. 
But, you know, it was a fun game. Now we're getting into the SketchUp line of things. As you can see, there's a character there, um, and below him is a square. I decided I counted the squares in the Sim house, in the Goth, and as I saw, it was about 3 foot 4 by 3 foot 4 in terms of dimensions. However, if you're not using the English system, approximately 1 meter by 1 meter, or 1 square meter. And that seems about right, you know, as you can see, a person's walk, how a person is in that square, and then in the game, the doors snap to these squares, the tables and chairs snap to these squares, and everything's sort of really based off a of grid. That's how the creators made their game. So, but in my estimate, I believe it was a 3 foot 4 by a 3 foot 4. So I used that. And that's pretty much the closest I can think of. Here, you see I redrew the layout of the house using the exact squares that the game had shown using my 3 foot 4 by 3 foot 4. And it was a very simple task because all I did was just count the squares and I made it at that. The outlines show the porches and patios on this house. However, you'll see what I have done. Here, using that same grid, here is my version of this house. As you can see, it's pretty, very much the same in, on the uh, exterior walls. However, I omitted the I omitted the back patio for good reason, and you'll see that in just a second. But let's go over here and see. As you can see pink is the grid that I made in correspondence with the game grid and as you can see it's a very good fit over the actual house. Now as you can see I actually used the very front porch as is um, in terms of dimensions but I omitted the back porch. As you can see there's nothing under this um, outline. Um, I guess it's because it has a dining room inside, and then I figured, because the house I made was raised, didn't really need it. Let's go back. So we're back here. Now, as you see, don't, you see, I changed the windows up. I kind of changed the placement of the windows, if you can go back and compare it to the game house. I changed the windows kind of to my liking. Because I kind of saw it as more of a, you know, kind of a creepy looking Victorian house. Uh, the game kind of does that, but then the windows don't seem to match. So I thought, um, so I thought I'd put my own windows in. And if you're looking for the door, look in the lower center. It's just not visible because of the diagonal wall. It's on that diagonal wall. As you can see, I sort of kept the dimensions of the living room the same. And that's in the same spot. Now, however, I made a big doorway. And then, hopefully you can follow my cursor, but... Made this as a dining room with a bay window. Because if you think about it, in the game house, there's just a big empty space right here where this dining room is. And considering my knowledge on old houses, usually the dining room is just beyond the living room. And the kitchen is always in the back. 
So that's what I did. As you can see, I in this pink room, the kitchen, I squeezed it all the way to the back. It was really like a like a, how an old house would look. And then there's a door back here that will lead stairs down into the basement. Like how an old house would be again. You can see it looks like an L shape. That's the where they are. And you might be able to see that in my video of the house in just a few minutes. Now on the upper right you see a hallway. Okay, in place of Mortimer and uh, Bella's room, I put a smaller bedroom and a bathroom. The smaller bedroom I'll make is a den or a guest room or whatever you want to call it. Then there's a bathroom back here that I put. It's closer to where the bedrooms are. As you can see, I tried to um, carry on with the green tile as they had in the game house, the original house. And then back here, where there's um, where that old bathroom used to be in the game house, I just made it into a bedroom. And I think that would be Cassandra's bedroom. There was a diagonal wall here, but I decided to square it out for space. Because I could... Because it makes it kind of unusable, you know, so I decided to um, make it a corner instead of a diagonal. And then one other thing you should notice is that I um, have the stairs in the same place as the original house. But I flipped them around. So stairs you access from the hallway instead of the living room. Just to kind of increase usability in the living room. And also, it would be just nothing nothing but a private bedroom, a private suite upstairs anyway, which I'll make it Bella and Mortimer's, and you're going to see that in just a second. Here's the grid again. Now, this grid is for the upstairs, as I counted in the original house, the grid... Now it used to be, that used to be Cassandra's bedroom in the original house. But as you can see, I transformed it into a master suite. So there's a bedroom right here. Then um, there's a closet and a bathroom. Now you're wondering about the open stairs. You have to open a door to access the stairs downstairs, so you can still close it off from downstairs. But this all used to be Cassandra's bedroom, and now it's Mortimer's and Bella's. They get a closet and their own ensuite bathroom, which is nice. And I mean, if this were my house, I would have had done it that way. As you can see, all right, so I put the grid. It's almost the perfect fit. However, take a look. Um, I decided to make the, uh, my version one square bigger. And the reason I did that is not only because the stairs were turned around, but the way the roofs were made in the game, I changed that and I made it um, one unified roof. As you will see in just a second, and after making it one unified roof, there was room to put another um, square in here where a person on the ground would never even know. So that's the story with that. And I actually could have made it even one more square if I wanted to. But I did Alright, comparing the back of the house. Now, I said before that um, there's that table and the patio outside. 
I omitted both. I omitted that patio, as you see here. Um, you can kind of put your own patio right here. See my cursor? Right here, in this lower left. You can put a little patio there. Um, however, you know, when the house is raised, it kind of complicates things a little bit. Plus, you actually get a proper dining room in my version. Now, another change that I made was, you see, look at this original house here in the photo on the left. You see that the roof is just a whole bunch of pyramid, mismatched, mismatched pyramids, right? Um, as you can see on my version on the right, I sort of just made the roof more flowing. And it's not just a whole bunch of hodgepodge pyramids. And I mean, of course, in the game, you know, that's how they made it, but that's not how a real house is. I tried to make it a little more realistic, you know? So, and then as you can also see how the upstairs in the original game house looks. See, the walls are all there, you know? Here in my version... Some of the walls are hit. Some of that wall is hidden by this roof here because I just continued up with the pitch, so that the part of the roof hides part of the wall, and that's where I had added that square. No one would know. No one on the outside would know. So yeah, and then one last thing is you see that diagonal here in the original game house was where the bathroom is, that's the diagonal. I squared that out, made it, made it to a bedroom so you can use that space. So yeah. Now, finally we are ready to see the actual house that I made my model. And you'll see how it all fits together. I just say play, sorry. Again, this is just how I envisioned it as it to be an actual house in this world. And I put a lot of my own colors and imagination into it. That's still a cool house. That's why I decided to make it. Stove in the kitchen. Just more kitchen. Kind of a 50s look to it. Roof. Second floor. First floor, green bathroom, oh. and if you want to see these photo, um, scenes again, just pause the video when it lands on it, and we're going to go one more time around the house. Now, if you're wondering about the front porch, it's still the same size. I just added the columns and the roof to it. It's a mirror above that fireplace. Looking into the dining room. Dining room. Looking into the living room. Kitchen again.
It's actually a pretty big room. Their own little bathroom. Cassandra's closet under the stairs. Alright, and that's it. Alright, everybody, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate, comment, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching these videos. And I will see you next time. Alright, you have a good day. Goodbye.